Nothing is going to look right, including our marriage, until we look good. Today we're learning from Laura Doyle's book, The Surrendered Wife and the Empowered Wife, Taking Care of Yourself First. When you're feeling frazzled, tired, overwhelmed, cranky, basically you're not in a good mood, and we all get into those moods. The number one reason for it most likely is that we're not taking care of ourselves. We're burnt out. And we, if we're burnt out, we don't have much to give. When you find yourself losing patience and interest in your husband, check to see if you've been neglecting your self-care. What is self-care? Self-care is doing things that I love doing in the moment that I'm doing it, not after it's done, not after I'm done with the activity, but in the moment. And I want to practice self-care on a daily pace, basis. I want to practice it religiously because when I practice it religiously, I'm showing myself that I'm respecting myself, I'm respecting my needs, and I'm honoring my female nature. What is honoring my female nature? Honoring my femininity. I want to have a good time. I want to have pleasure in what I'm doing. And when I have pleasure in what I'm doing, when I'm enjoying the activity, I naturally become in a good mood. So if you have none to give in your marriage, you're giving your marriage absolutely no chance to th survive and the only way we can become givers is if we are going to fill up our tank our self-care tank first why do we want to take care of ourselves first first of all just like putting the oxygen mask on yourself in an airplane to save your own life first you can't help anyone if you don't take care of yourself first if you don't save yourself first you know, self-care in the house or at work. At work, you want to be a, a certain person. You want to produce. You want to thrive. You want to create. You want to impress your boss. You want to be. You want to produce results. At home, I don't want to produce results. I don't have to impress anyone. All I want to do is be. Be feminine. Sink into my female nature and just be. Now women, we naturally are givers. We naturally are givers. We want to do, we want to help, we want to save lives, we want to make someone happy. But we can't do that if we don't take care of ourselves first. The intention, the quality of our giving is not the same. So when we tend to our own pleasure, what are we doing? We're doing something that we really enjoy. Now, when I'm doing something and I enjoy it only after it's done, that's not really um, taking care of myself in a way where I'm enjoying this pleasurable activity. For example, let's say I enjoy strength training, but obviously when you're training, when you're exercising, Maybe this exercise I don't particularly enjoy, but I enjoy how I feel afterwards. And I know it's good for me. So every single day, we want to do three things, three things that we just enjoy for the pleasure of it. And I'm going to give you examples. And you want to do two things that discipline you, that make you feel good about yourself, that make you feel accomplished. So list one are, are things that you do or don't do just for the fun of it, just for the fact that it feels good to you. You feel, it feels good to you as you're doing it. I'm going to give you a bunch of examples. Talking to a friend, talking to a sister, feeling lazy on the couch, j sipping that cup of coffee, having that ice cream, um, painting, coloring, watching funny videos, dancing, going to a lecture, getting a manicure, going for a nature walk, visiting a beautiful garden. So those things may make you feel good in the moment. You want to do three of those things. And some non-activities are 
enjoying the view of a lake, listening to rainwater and meditating, putting on nature music and absorbing its uh, beautiful colors and sounds and the music. So these are there's three things that you want to do every single day that make you feel good in the moment. Now the other two things that you do are disciplining yourself. Maybe it's calling that elderly person just to find out how they are and it's hard for you to make time for that. Maybe it's um, making that dentist appointment or the, those bunch of doctor's appointments. Maybe rearranging your room, creating that healthy menu, decluttering your house or folding laundry. So those things are acts of discipline and accomplishment. You feel good about yourself afterwards. You know, self-care expands your time. Self-care, with self-care, you're recharging yourself. And when I'm recharged, when I feel good and I'm feeling relaxed, I actually get more things done. And so will you, if you haven't learned this concept yet. Self-care can go a long way to restoring my can-do point of view. Therefore, to have more time and to be able to do things that I enjoy and to be a responsible person who gets things done, I need to indulge in self-care. You know, a personal story of mine is I actually planned an evening to be away somewhere. And unfortunately, plans change. Well, everything happens for the best. We know that. But at the moment, uh, I felt very disappointed because... I, I was looking forward to uh, that evening and leaving the house and eating out and whatever that was. And it got canceled. Uh, someone wasn't feeling well in the family um, and it got canceled. So, of course, I felt disappointed, upset, and I got cranky. I, was, I wasn't in the best of moods. And I said to myself, okay, Leia, now it's time for you to indulge in self-care. What do you need to do? So I said, you know what I'm going to do? And, you know, I, I, I like eating fresh, hot food. I was looking forward to it. I didn't have anything uh, fresh at home. I don't like eating leftovers. I didn't want to that night. So I said, uh, I'm going to go to the store and buy myself something to eat. And I enjoyed it. I sat, indulged, enjoyed. And that night, because my schedule was mumble jumble, you know, it wasn't something I expected. I just decided to go with the flow of the day. That made me feel good. Yes, I didn't cross out more things on my to-do list that I may have wanted to do, but I was a happy person, and my family gravitated towards me. I was good to be around. So this is a practical example that could happen. How do you know, how do you know whether you've had enough self-care? How do you know you don't have enough self-care? If you continue to be grumpy, maybe doing more than three a day would work for that day. But uh, religiously, you want to practice it. You want to write it down every day in the morning. It's a good idea just to keep on things, uh, keep, keep a chart of things that you want to do and keep on writing it down. And you probably won't be able to do most of them. But the fact that you want to do certain things, maybe you want to uh, buy, buy a new painting and you want to look it up online. Maybe you want to do, I don't know, therapeutic shopping. Just look around the store. Uh, maybe you want to call a certain person. Whatever that it is. And maybe it seems like it's impossible it's going to happen today, but just write it down. You want to make sure you plan out your self-care. Three things you're definitely doing because you enjoy doing them. And two things to discipline yourself. You may do more. But the fact that you're planning it shows that you're respecting yourself. Shows that this is important to you. Your happiness is in your hands. It is not the job of a husband to make us happy. If I, uh, if I make myself happy and I'm relaxed and I'm smiling and I'm enjoying myself, the way a husband responds to a wife is he wants to continue to do things to continue to make her happy. She's continuing to be happy. He wants to maintain that happiness. If he sees that the wife complains and is not grateful for what he has done, what happens is he withdraws. He silently withdraws. He does other things. And uh, he doesn't stand in the way because he's not appreciated anyway. But if I make myself happy, which is the key tool to a marriage, to a relationship that I'm taking into my own hands. What are the benefits to self-care? 
first of all, it shows that this is a way to have a good relationship. If I'm practicing self-care, I'm taking the responsibility to have a good relationship. I'm taking care of myself. I'm not relying on someone else to put me in a good mood to make me happy. It's signaling to your husband that you are able to be pleased. There are ways to please you, and he sees what you enjoy. Maybe you love that mocha latte. I love mocha lattes. So maybe your husband will buy you one because he knows how much you love them in a surprise morning. And you're like, wow, thank you so much. To signal that he, he, he knows how to please you. Spending more time doing things you love is another benefit of self-care. And it teaches people how to treat you. Now, if you respect yourself, you're showing people you like being treated well. And you respect that. And people will treat you well back. It's also, my, my own thing is, it's also, my own idea here is, it's a mitzvah that you do things with happiness. So if it's a mitzvah, a mitzvah means it's a, it's a form of connection. It's, it's, a, it's a form of, uh, it's a good deed. It's a, it's a good way to connect to God. So if, if it's a mitzvah, if I'm doing things because it's a mitzvah, it's a mitzvah to do things with happiness. So we want to do things because our best intentions is to do it right, is to do it with happiness. So we're doing what we're doing anyway. So why don't we do it right? So, you know, after we come home from work, see, we man up at work. We want to impress our boss. We want to produce results. We want to improve the bottom line, as Laura Doyle puts it. So what we want to do is we want to kind of switch gears when we come home. So, you know, Jewish people have a mezuzah at the door, like a prayer in a little compartment. So the mezuzah has a letter, has a samech. So what we want to do is, Sarah Carmelli taught me this. It's shaped in a way that it looks like a smile. So you want to remind yourself that as you kiss the mezuzah, Jewish people have a practice of kissing it. You remind yourself that I'm right now going to come into my house with a smile. I'm going to find a few reasons to smile. And yes, it's a hard day at work. And yes, you have so much more to do. And yes, you're tired. But you have a family to come home to. Maybe you have a job that you love. Maybe the job is close to home. Maybe it was sunny today. Maybe you just bought yourself take-home dinner. Whatever that it is, find something. Something that will flow with you. And listen, if you can't find something, turn on the radio. There's always something wrong that's in the world that's on the radio. So it didn't happen to you, hopefully. And it could put a smile on your face. So before you come into the house, maybe you want to write in a journal. Maybe you want to write a gratitude journal. Maybe you want to write three things you did yesterday to practice your self-care. Maybe you want to listen to some music just to switch gears. Right now, I'm not being and trying to produce. Right now, I just want to sink into my femininity and just be and enjoy. So I would like to give us all a blessing. May we delve into our femininity as we practice good self-care and in this way we can have a ripple effect on happy healthy relationships and marriages Leah Abramov being in the cup